Yeah, so I, I was just going to walk through where these things are on the wiki, um, but I, I see that Desiree uh, posted links to all this stuff already. So maybe everyone has already clicked through it, which is, which is fine. Um, but I'll, I'll just do a quick, quick, quick walk through anyway. You can, you, can you see the, uh, my screen with the I2B2 webpage on it? Griffin? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Uh, so I'm starting through I2B2.org, but uh, the preferred place to start actually is the community wiki, there's community.i2b2.org. And um, one of Desiree's links has a, a what's new page on the Transmart Foundation, I2B2 Transmart Foundation that um, also links there. Uh, but if you come to the I2B2 community wiki, which is where we, we keep all of our documentation on I2B2, um, and just scroll down to the kind of the main section, there's documentation on the left here. And on getting started, we have um, underneath videos and tutorials, we have the common data model guide and the bundle install guide now. So if you click on one of these, click on the common data model guide, um, shows that it was released in uh, January and it's split into chapters. So each chapter is on a separate page. You can click on any portion of the page. So say you're interested in table and field descriptions. Uh, oh my, I fixed all these links last night, but I missed that one. <laughs> well, uh, so say we're interested in table and field descriptions. Um, then we can uh, scroll through and read about the uh, all the, the tables and the fields in I2B2. And you can see that there are a lot of links in here to other things on the wiki. There are also uh, outlinks to other uh, documentation that is on the web. Um, there, there's a couple of Google links here. We've put the um, the 133 patients in the demo data that is also available in GitHub, but we put them in um, Google uh, Google spreadsheets. So you can just kind of scroll through and look at very quickly what the demo data looks like without having to install all the data in I2B2. Um, the, the other kind of nice quick uh, thing that we've done is you can get a quick glance at all of the fields and tables in, in the core tables in I2B2 without having to click through all of those wiki links. No, the, the wiki links have a lot more detail, but this just you know gives you some uh, quick reference to like okay, so these are the the bold are the the primary key or considered the primary key of the table, the italics are kind of common administrative um, fields, and then the, these are these are other. So if you want to see, okay, concept code and observation fact, how long has that been part of I2B2? You can scroll to the right here. You can see that concept code was added in version 1.0 of I2B2. I was actually excited to see that going back through the modifier code was part of I2B2 1.0 as well, even though it, the modifiers were not you know, supported as part of the ontology at the time. But uh, Sean had a lot, of, a lot of good foresight into what, what would be needed uh, to make this a sustainable, sustainable data model years into the future. So we have uh, table and field descriptions, a quick start guide, tutorials on how to use this CDM, including some examples of data. Uh, we have um, information on using the blob for images and putting in uh, lab data and using high-low values. Um, and then, then we even you know we even have some advanced topics at the end, a little bit on encryption and multi-fact and OMOP and um, ETL. So this is this, this as Griffin said, year two is going to evolve this, so it's a work in progress. But it, I think it it really consolidates a lot of the um, a lot of the documentation into one place. And then the bundle install guides. There's a population wide analysis bundle, a data science bundle. These are each contained on one page, so you could just scroll through or print this out. Um, this is mostly, Griffin showed a lot of these diagrams already. These are diagrams that he developed on this shrine, its components, and ways of structuring it, um, different configurations for shrine. And then we put a lot of time into making sure we could actually install, um, install shrine. So there, uh, 
there, there's some detailed information on installing I2B2, uh, information on installing the ACT ontology in I2B2. That is a part of I2B2, the, the release, but just to, to add some more detail on how to install it. And then um, we went through the Shrine documentation, made sure we could actually, you know, follow the steps we need to follow to actually install Shrine. So this, this should be pair with the Shrine documentation well and in actually installing Shrine relatively easily. And then um, you can install the hub. Uh, so if you want to have your own Shrine network, you can set up a hub as well. The, uh, the data science bundle, this is, you know, V1. I said it's an alpha version, but it's, kind of version one. It has a lot on the architecture of uh, the architecture of I2B2, some of the, on the architecture of Transmart. Um, there's a little bit less on installing Transmart. That's something we're still working on. But uh, but there there is, I hesitate to do live demos, but this should be, this should be, Hmm. So this is this is a an I2B2 database, and somewhere in, in the server, Transmart is running as well, and that that link might not be live right now. So a uh, couple of hiccups there, but uh, but the the documentation is there, and it will remain um, there. So as we add more things, we'll add new links to the getting started uh, section, uh, including new bundles and updated documentation. Uh, any any questions from anyone? All right. I'll also I'll point out that you know, one of the one of the interesting things in creating these bundles is I think it helped us understand where we had gaps or um, in our documentation or places where our products were not as sort of streamlined as possible on on the integration, and uh, we're learning these things as we go and filling in the holes and um, and working to improve these uh, um, the bundles and the wiki documentation to make it easier for others. I did a little sort of experiment where I had some of the programmers in my group who really have not used ITB to a Transmart before try to go through um, the documentation. And, you know, there were um, some things worked really easy. Others are questions like, what is Shrine? And, uh, yeah, I forgot that sometimes if you haven't been embedded in this world for a decade, you sometimes forget some of the basics. And, um, uh, that's been very helpful in putting us together, understand all the different tools that we have and uh, making them work together to solve different use cases um, groups have. This is really key, it's tying us back to you know, Sean's talk this morning when we're talking about, um, you know, the, that ITB2 is selected to be kind of the, um, uh, the, the basis for collecting and looking at data in the, um, the COVID long hauler recovery consortium you know, that this kind of bundle work to the the Dell project is really key to that allowed us to finally put all together put together all the different foundation products we had agreed to that common data model so that we can integrate these different data elements you know it's really good timing that um that we had done all this and we were sort of in the right place at the right time to um uh to be selected by nih for this um so again great work from everyone who was involved the technology committee and, and working to put together these bundles with support from Dell and others on um, making this all happen. Any questions? People were very quiet earlier in the day. Um, usually have some drop off near the end, but. Uh, um, thoughts on what future bundles that you might be interested in, or um, if you have, if you've done extensions or plugins at your own institution that you would be willing to share with us, we'd love to hear about those things and see if we can, um, if we can package together and figure out where it fits within, within this pipeline. Javi has a question. I'm going to allow him to unmute himself. Uh, hey, Jeff, and now. Uh, agree with that. I kind of missed the community track last year, but I feel that uh, you know, uh, like I'm having that experience in India where people have not have not anywhere heard about it, and working with people there, 
I find having Docker to be very helpful. And I think that also has been somewhat of an experience in the 4C, like, you know, like earlier people were very uh, skeptical about it, but it has thankfully worked well to use the, the scripts in 4C. So I think having some kind of a Docker quick install, and I'm happy to help with that for I2B2 or something, you know, it does help. Uh, it could even, and we had VMs before, uh, but I think people, the community is kind of catching up with Docker and it, I, I have found that to be a good experience to get people started earlier on. Yeah, we did a survey when we were releasing 12 and it's, it, people really still wanted the VM at the time, but I, yeah, I'm a huge fan of Docker. I think it would be great to, great to get Docker, uh, official Docker images out. Ulrich has a question. I'm going to unmute. Go ahead, Ulrich. You should be able to unmute. No, I have to double unmute, so now it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, a, I got a, an answer to the earlier question. So we're using an older I2B2 installation still uh, with the uh, rather complicated biomaterial model. So we're integrated, uh, integrating uh, ECRF data uh, with data from a uh, biomaterial bank. Works nicely. Um, and uh, the uh, installation was really cumbersome because it took a long, long time. So I would totally chime in that a Docker would help. Um, well, it's that's not new. And it, it, the same is true actually for a newer Transmart installations. Uh, and the use case would be a data review, um, again, including data from uh, ECRFs, which are quite common. So it's a CDC ODM import. It should be able to work out of the box combined with some other data types like from a, from a cancer registry, some biomaterial data, some omics data. And I think the, the basic installation should be done within one day. And with the Docker container, I think it's completely realistic. We talked earlier in the, in the foundation board as well that a package could include, you know, a, a free database, maybe not Oracle, and it could be, if, yeah, it might be a simple version that should be set up in a day. That would be a dream, maybe for Christmas. <laughs> okay, any other questions? No, no, the question would be uh, maybe is, is there any technical obstacle or is there some, some Docker limitation? I don't know. Um, uh, or or st just the effort of, of setting up the Docker, testing it uh, to, to bundle it out. Um, I, I, Kavu well, was I, being humble earlier. He, he had set up Docker images for ITB2 yeah. that he put in his GitHub a while ago. Yeah, there, there's a progression we're following. You know, we first had to get the common data model. Um, and, and there's still stuff work we're doing this year to get ITB2 and Transmart to work together better. Um, you know, I, and then we have user interfaces in, in the documentation as well. Um, I think Docker is on the timeline and we have to figure out priorities and where all the stuff fits. Um, we, we saw in, in, in the 4C effort, it was like three different kinds of institutions. It was some that loved Docker and you know, they were able to install it and it worked great. There's another group that um, they were not allowed to use Docker for some reason. Their institution, for security reasons, others did not want um, Docker, and they've had to do a whole bunch of kind of rewriting to get things to work. And there's a third group that um, doesn't know Docker and it's confusing, and kind of, we've lost them a little bit in the 4C, and they just want the R script or the I2B2 data model, a standalone um, thing. So um, while there is um, a lot of interest in it, Jeff said people. So like VMs and the, and the individual software components, sometimes the Docker can be a little bit of a black box and the institutions kind of have to trust, you know, put that in all going to work as opposed to being able to install, sometimes being able to install each individual piece um, makes them feel better or the IRBs and security reviews of it. So um, I think we're going to get there, but you know, it's a, it's a process towards that goal. So I, I've just posted a link uh, about the Docker's, you know, which I have been using and, you know, a lot of the people in the community have been using, but it, they are black boxes and there's still some work required to, you know, put them in the documentation and, you know, have them, uh, I mean, they are actually, uh, have them build, every time there's a release, there's a process pipeline which automatically builds these images. So I think that pipeline needs to be put out. Mm -hmm. 